Hi. Uh, in this course, we talk about passionate versus companionate love. There's believed to be almost sort of a trade-off between the two, and that typically relationships will follow a predictable pattern, a timeline in which relationships uh, begin with passionate love characterized by intense emotionality and physicality. And this passionate love dissipates over time and is replaced with companionate love, which is characterized by commitment and intimacy. And there are a couple of explanations for why we see this predictable pattern across relationships and this change in the type of love that characterizes the relationship. One explanation is basic biological habituation. So habituation is a broad phenomenon that is not limited to romantic or sexual encounters. And the idea behind habituation is that repeated exposure to a stimulus will result in a decrease in the intensity of responding to that particular stimulus. Um, simply because it's difficult to maintain a high level of emotionality um, or physical arousal uh, over an extended period of time uh, or with repeated encounters over an extended period of time. And so we'll see a decline in the physical kind of biological uh, arousal state to a repeatedly encountered stimulus. Uh, so that's our physiological explanation for this change from passionate love to companionate love. Uh, but there is also a more kind of psychological explanation for this change across time in the relationship. Uh, and this is explained by the self-expansion model. The explanation is that the early stages of a relationship are characterized by uh, intense self-disclosure. So early in the relationship, we have reciprocal self-disclosure in which uh, you reveal information about yourself to your partner. Your partner reciprocates that by sharing intimate details about themselves and their life. And the theory is that in these early stages of the relationship, the self-concept expands to incorporate the other person into the self. So you are essentially absorbing some of your partner's ideas and beliefs and values and interests and hobbies and maybe even some of their, uh, their personality characteristics. You are uh, absorbing and incorporating them into your own personal self-concept. Uh, and that this happens uh, at a very intense rate, really rapidly early on in the relationship. But throughout the course of the relationship, this will begin to decline. So initially, this is, is a very exciting process. You're learning a lot about the other person. You're in a sense kind of learning new things about yourself and expanding the self, but that at some point, uh, you're going to kind of reach a limit where uh, you've shared everything that you have to share and, and they've shared everything that they have to share. So you kind of know uh, all of the important details of their life and who they are. Uh, so the information that maybe they disclose at a certain point will no longer be novel. Uh, so you've kind of learned everything there is to know about this person. So nothing's really kind of new and exciting from that psychological kind of self-disclosure perspective. Uh, and so that may be why we see a decrease in passionate love that's characterized by kind of this intense emotionality. Uh, the part of what is fueling that is this process of reciprocal self-disclosure and expansion, uh, and not just the physical aspects of the relationship, uh, and that both of these decline with time. Uh, so 
we have a couple of things to, to think about with this model. Uh, one is we have to, to ask, well, is there any evidence that people engage in this self-expansion process? So uh, what is the research support for this model? Sadikas in 92 found that individuals in close relationships used a broader range of domains to describe themselves. So suggesting a, a more expanded sense of self that could be due to the fact that they were in close relationships. But of course, we have to question the direction of causality because we could say that people who already kind of naturally or innately have a, a greater diversity uh, or a more expanded sense of self uh, are perceived as more desirable partners. Maybe they're seen as, as more attractive or as more exciting. And so it's that expanded sense of self that leads to the relationship rather than the formation of the relationship leading to the expanded sense of self. And so this is why the Aaron study uh, with colleagues in 1995 is important because we have a longitudinal study. So in this particular study, we're tracking 325 people over a 10 week period to see changes in self-concept. And what Aaron and colleagues found was that those individuals in their sample who reported that they fell in love during that 10 week period had an increase in self-esteem, self-efficacy, and had an expanded self-concept compared to their baseline measures. So after falling in love, uh, they're using more words to describe themselves. Uh, and those who fell in love were using a greater, diver sorry, a greater variety or diversity of self-descriptive terms. So what about changes across the pattern of the relationship? The argument is that the decline in passionate love and excitement is due to a decrease in the self-expansion processes. Uh, research suggests that uh, couples who engage in shared novel activities have an increase in sexual desire and in relationship satisfaction. So uh, again, suggesting that uh, sharing in kind of the self-disclosure, uh, novel self-expansion is contributing to aspects of passionate love and relationship satisfaction, and that a decline in self-expansion is, is maybe contributing to a decline in relationship satisfaction. And so if we can boost uh, processes that lead to self-expansion, uh, engaging in new, exciting, novel activities that expand the sense of self, and we share those with a partner, uh, that we can promote relationship satisfaction. Uh, in your slides, you also see the study by Slaughter and colleagues in which they look at, well, what happens to self-concept post-breakup if we have incorporated this other person into our sense of self? What happens to our sense of self when we lose this other person? Uh, and what Slaughter and colleagues found was that uh, it seems to be the case that people have, uh, to some extent, identity confusion post-breakup, uh, that they are indicating uh, more confusion in their sense of self, uh, a greater disruption in their sense of self, and a self-concept change that occurs uh, with breakup. And so that could be one reason why breakups are uh, so detrimental to our emotional health, that it's not just the loss of this person, it's also a change in our own self-identity that's occurring uh, as a result of, of this breakup.